Hello and welcome again. Uh, I think it's time we talk about another cipher. And in this case, we're going to talk about the substitution cipher. Now, this cipher is going to be a little bit similar to the scissor cipher. But the way we're going to transform the letters is not going to be about shifting the letters. It's, in this case, it's going to be an arbitrary uh, assignment to the letters. And what do I mean by that? So basically what we have to do again is we're going to start with the English alphabet in uppercase as we did with uh, the scissor cipher. Of course, uh, you can start with another alphabet if you want to include the lowercase letters. That's fine. Uh, but for this example, let's just include the uppercase English letters. Now, what we're going to do, uh, similar to what we did in the scissor cipher, is every letter will be transformed into some other letter. Uh, but the way you transform it is not going to be about shifting. In this case, it's going to be kind of like arbitrary. But you cannot repeat. So I'm going to explain that in uh, right now. So let's start with the letter A now. So we're going to start with uh, the letter A here, this letter. And I'm going to transform uh, that letter into some other letter. What letter should I transform it to? Whatever you want in any of the letters. Even the letter A itself, you can transform it. Now that transformation, I'm going to uh, make a notation with an arrow. So whenever I write down an arrow like this one right here, uh, let me choose the color, the arrow. It means that I'm I'm uh, transforming that letter into some other letter. So in this case, let's say for example, I choose to transform the letter A into the letter L. So uh, let me choose the white color here. So it's going to be A will be transformed into the capital L. And uh, what you're going to do is you see I have down here I have again my uh, alphabet uppercase so once I use a letter here I cannot use it anymore so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross it out from the alphabet below to indicate that I'm not gonna use it anymore so as you can see here I'm gonna cross out the letter L so that means I'm cannot use it anymore now I keep doing that now this assignation is arbitrary and you can do whatever you want as long as you don't repeat letters here at this level. So I can, let's do the same thing with the letter B. So I can do something else with the letter B. So if first, for example, I can transform the letter B into the letter Z, capital Z. So again, so we can transform that B into Z. And I can, what I have to do now is I have to cross out the letter Z from my alphabet below because that will tell me that I cannot use it again in some other letter. So I'm going to cross it out. So here below, I'm going to cross out the letter Z. And so I keep doing that until I assigned every letter here on top. I transform it into some other letter here at the bottom. Now this is giving me this is giving me the cipher actually. This is giving me a way to uh, translate the plain text into the cipher text and the translation is following this rule here so whenever you see the letter capital A it will be transformed into the letter L B will be transformed into the letter Z and so on and so forth so in this case you see the uh, assignation of letter of the transformation is kind of arbitrary as long as you don't repeat letters uh, here at this level so you, for example, you're not allowed to take Z and transform it again into the letter L because L is already used. It's right here used. So you cannot do that. But you can assign the letter Z, the letter C, for example, here. You can say, for example, it's C again. You can do that. You can repeat uh, uh, the letter. So if I can do this, so I'll transform the letter C into the letter capital Z again. You can do that. And I will have to cross out, of course, uh, the letter at the bottom so I cannot use it again in some other computations. So I cross it out, I cannot use it. As you can see here, this is going to take a long time if I actually go to the whole thing, trying to sign here uh, what letter goes this one into. And I remember this is kind of arbitrary as long as you don't repeat letters here at the bottom. And that's basically what the substitution cipher is. So it's giving us a way to transform the letters into other letters but it's not a shift anymore. So I don't have to say I'm going to shift uh, three positions, one position, negative one. I just arbitrarily do it. 
Now, this kind of uh, substitution cipher that is here uh, is a generalized version of the Caesar cipher. And what that means is this, and I'm going to explain that a little bit later uh, in other video, is every Caesar cipher is a substitution cipher, but not the other way around. The, if I have a substitution cipher, it's not necessarily a Caesar cipher. It does not come from a shift. Okay, so what I'm going to explain now, what I'm going to show you in a second, is actually the actual, the whole thing here, because I'm sure you don't want me, you don't want me to see all this assigning arrows 26 times here. So I'm going to stop now this uh, version here, and I'm going to uh, show you in a second uh, this, uh, this whole thing when I just fill it out. Uh, so see, this is the complete uh, uh, substitution cipher now. So as you can see here, uh, this is what I was doing in the uh, little while ago. So A was transformed into L, B into Z, and C into Z. So as you can see, I can do any assignation. And you can see here the letters at the bottom are not repeated. And that's the important part of the substitution cipher. Whenever you transform this row into some other row here, uh, the rows here, the, big, uh, the second row, is basically what you have here on top, but it's just arranged in some other way. Um, this is what we call a substitution cipher. So this is this whole thing here, this whole setup that we call a matrix. And this gives me a way to transform the plain text into the cipher text. So for example, let's say uh, I want to uh, transform the plain text so let's say we have the plain text, uh, hello. And remember that it's all in uppercase. So hello, right? Um, so the have to, what I have to do is transform the letter H, E. Oh, that's a typo, of course. Let me erase it. Uh, hello, double L. Uh, let me, so transform the letter um, H, E, L, L, and O into the corresponding uh, cipher text using uh, the rule that is right here. So we're using this particular cipher over there. So of course, that's going to be very easy to do because I just have to look here. I don't actually have to shift anything. I just have to look here on my list and just do it. So let's see how it uh, goes. So uh, let me choose another color here. So I'm going to transform the letter H here into, well, just go and look at the, uh, at the rule here. So I'm going to look for my letter H. So H will be transformed into T. So H will be transformed into T. There. Uh, e. Well, go back to the top here. What is E? E is right here. Will be transformed into F. So that will be the transformation there. So this is going to be transformed into the letter F. So F. L, so it's exactly the same thing again. So take the letter L, it's going to be transformed into the letter Y. And because I have two L's, well, I just don't have to do it again twice. So then I just have to go ahead and say, okay, L and L transform into the letter Y. So Y, Y. And finally, O is going to be translated, if I look at it in here, will be transformed into B. So let's do it over there. So this letter O will be transformed into the letter uh, B. All right. And so that this X, the last one is gonna be the cipher text. So the cipher text, the cipher text uh, will be uh, that one, the one that is you see right here. So that will be the cipher text. Of course, this is gonna be uh, in the same setup. So Alice will be the one doing this. Uh, Alice will have the plain text that is right here, transform it into the cipher text, send it to the insert your channel to Bob. And of course, Eve uh, will receive also the message because she's listening to that channel. Uh, basically what we had in the other one. Uh, so that's how you actually do the uh, substitution cipher. Uh, the only problem here that you can see is I have to keep a lot of information at hand. And what I mean is this, uh, when I have the Caesar cipher, uh, the only thing I have, or the key that I have to use is very simple. It's a shift, I just say shift of four, and that will tell me exactly what I need to do. 
in the case of the substitution cipher, um, I actually have to have all this information. Now, there is a way to make this a little bit easier and to uh, have this information in a shorter way, a simplified way. But to do that, uh, we need a little bit of number theory and because we haven't covered that yet, so at this moment, we will have to do with this whole thing. So basically what that means is when you have, uh, remember the setup that we have from the beginning, that we had the Alice here, and we have Bob, and you always have to have Eve listening to the channel. Uh, Alice and Bob have to agree on the cipher. The cipher is a substitution cipher, and so you have to be this is going to be the key. How are they going to encrypt and decrypt messages? So, so again, so you take here, Al, uh, Alice is the one who is doing the encryption, which is basically this process that we just did here. We took the plain text, transform it into the cipher text. And, of course, Bob is going to receive that message. And she, he has to decrypt it. Now, the way you decrypt with the substitution cipher is what you will expect. I mean, if this arrow that you see here indicates from, I have my plain text, this is what I call the plain text, I transform it into the cipher text. To go back from the cipher text to the plain text, the only thing you have to do is read backwards. So you, instead of going from top to bottom, now you go from bottom to top to be able to decipher what uh, the person sent you. Um, so that's basically what the substitution cipher is. Um, another thing that we're gonna discuss a little bit later is, again, the same question, how many uh, substitution ciphers are there? And also the other question is, uh, if Eve knows that Alice and Bob are using a substitution cipher, how can Eve break it? How can Eve crack it? Now, remember that was very easy in the Caesar cipher, as long as, of course, Eve knows they are using a Caesar cipher. Now, for the substitution cipher, uh, that's going to take a little bit more work, but it can be done. And so what I'm saying here is this. What I'm saying is the Caesar cipher is extremely insecure. It can be cracked very easily. The substitution cipher will be also be cracked, but it requires a little bit more work. It's a little bit more secure, but not by much, actually. And so the next time uh, I see you here in the video, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do uh, an example about, uh, again, the decryption using that exactly um, exactly the same, uh, the same cipher I have here. And so I'll stop there.